A response to hard to hurt, HEMA is useless and MMA guys coming into a HEMA scenario would wreck them. Hey folks, Matt Eason here, Scholar Gladiator. I don't know how many of you will have seen Hard to Hurt's video, but I'll stick a link below to it here. Also be aware that Shad, uh, Shadiversity, has also done a response to Hard to Hurt because Hard to Hurt mentioned Shad in the video. A bunch of my followers have said, Matt, you need to do a response to this. I actually don't think I need to, but a whole bunch of people have asked me to, so I'm gonna do a really concise one in three points of basically why Hard to Hurt is just completely wrong. Very briefly, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Matt Easton. I run HEMA clubs in the UK and have done for over the last 20 years. I also run the biggest HEMA event in the UK. I've competed a bunch. I've competed all over Europe back in the day and uh, America as well in 2016. Um, and I have a background in modern Olympic style fencing, which I did from age 16 to about 22. Also I did, um, I dabbled in unarmed martial arts um, and I've done a tiny bit since, um, but I mostly teach weapons and that's my focus. So the first point to make is that HEMA teaches weapons primarily. There are HEMA styles you could say certain types of wrestling, old style wrestling and all this kind of stuff um, but most HEMA that most people encounter today and most good HEMA clubs are focusing on um, weapons and they do do elements of grappling and unarmed martial arts within that as well. So remember that box boxing and wrestling of various types, even things like Savat, come under the HEMA heading and people who do HEMA, who train with weapons, very often also do unarmed martial arts and they often do it within the context of using a weapon at the same time. So often when we grapple and we wrestle, we've got a weapon in the other hand. So unlike something like BJJ, where we're rolling around on the ground for a long, long time, instead, if we end up on the ground, there's usually a stab involved or multiple stabs very, very quickly. So we focus on weapons. In contrast to that, traditional MMA doesn't at all. So um, absolutely MMA, you know, whether you're focusing on um, striking or whether you're focusing on grappling or you're mixing the two, ultimately, there's very rarely weapons involved and some MMA clubs might include weapons as an extra thing occasionally, but it's not their focus. Weapons are our focus. So if you're looking at something like knife use and knife defense, yes, unarmed martial arts are incredibly important, um, but you know we do that when we do knife defense stuff as well, uh, but we always have a knife involved. So if you're looking at use of weapons, fundamentally that's HEMA's wheelhouse, that is not MMA's wheelhouse. So the second point, now the context has been set, is that Hard to Hurt essentially shows that his whole premise is based on the fact that he takes a sword and buckler, I've got a buckler up there, but I won't grab it now, he shows a sword and buckler and shows himself repeatedly, successfully, most of the time, stabbing attackers using, for the most part, a baseball bat, or a softball bat, can't tell which it is, but a bat, okay? So fundamentally, within a HEMA context, that's a really easy fight. If you've got a sword and buckler, hell yeah, anybody's gonna beat someone with a bat um, because a sword and buckler is a vastly superior weapon system to a bat. Not only that, but both of these guys are untrained. The bat person, these are MMA guys, most of them, apart from just swinging really hard, don't really know what they're doing with the bat. And equally, the guy with the sword and buckler on Hard to Hurt channel, kind of he's got one thing that he does. He basically charges the person down with a buckler and then shanks them. Yeah, anybody can do that and you don't necessarily need HEMA to do that. But to put that into um, perspective, that is a bit like me going um, into a shop looking for someone who looks like a pretty easy target Bam! Punching them in the head and going, why would I ever need to learn boxing? I just successfully punched someone in the head. Well, yeah, they weren't, <laughs> they didn't know what they were doing. They didn't know how to defend themselves. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. If I come up, if he puts himself now against someone who's also got a sword and buckler, now watch him and that other person repeatedly shank each other. Who's winning? I will guarantee you, hard to hurt. Here's the challenge. You get a sword and buckler and your training buddies now also get a sword and buckler. How often do you kill each other in the training scenario? That's what HEMA is. That's what we do week in, week out, year in, year out, decade in, decade out in my case, because I'm an old man. Um, the fact is that we train with weapons against similar weapons and sometimes mismatched weapons. Sometimes you're using an inferior weapon. You've got a knife and the opponent's got a sword. 
that's a tough fight. You've got a sword, they've got a spear. That's a tough fight. And that's what we do. That's what we specialize in. So that's the point of HEMA, is learning how to use your weapon against another trained person who knows how to use their weapon. Now the third point is really important because I get the impression that Hard to Hurt hasn't even thought about this, not just is ignorant of the fact, but it hasn't even like entered his brain. Here's the news flash. There are loads of MMA people doing HEMA. <laughs> I mean hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. There are people I've known for 20 years in HEMA who are very active MMA uh, participants, in some cases competitors. Okay, the fact is there are loads of people who do MMA and HEMA at the same time. There are some people that do HEMA and realize that they're close in grappling game if it's relevant to their particular type of HEMA. If they're doing German longsword, for example, they realize their grappling game is a little bit weak. And so what they do is they go to the local BJJ club or judo club or whatever, um, MMA club, and they brush up on their grappling skills and they bring that back into the HEMA format. And we can use grappling, we can use this in HEMA, okay? Um, not only that, in my own club, for example, just in one club, just in my one London club, the first one I set up over 20 years ago, we currently have one MMA instructor, we have a jujitsu, traditional Japanese jujitsu instructor, and we have about, I think about six or eight people um, who are very like actively members of other sort of, let's call it unarmed martial arts, MMA, grappling mostly, um, boxing in one case, other martial arts clubs. So. It's completely normal. This, it's not like a, there's HEMA people over there, there's MMA people over there. If some of these MMA people came to HEMA, man, it would be like splitting the atom. No, they already exist. They're already in HEMA and they're already competing in HEMA. And do you know what? They don't wreck people. The fact is, yes, if they get into grappling, if they've done lots of grappling, then they have an advantage, but that goes in reverse. The people who pick up a sword, who've spent years training with a sword, they have an advantage with the sword. So if you just get someone who's a good grappler, who's really good, you know, good um, BJJ player, and they're really good at coming into the close, that's great, but they still need to get past the sword. So remember, in HEMA, it's not about one person having a sword and the other person having a bat or being unarmed. It's about two people both being well-armed and trained with their weapons. So if you want to successfully use your MMA, your BJJ, whatever you're doing, if you successfully want to use it against someone with a sword, you have to be able to defend yourself from their sword and get past their sword to get close enough to use your grappling. So you have to learn how to use the sword as well. So you know what, all of this aside, um, hard to hurt, I actually enjoyed your video a lot. Um, I think that if you wanted to learn more about weapons, you'd actually benefit from finding a good HEMA club. Now bear in mind, not all HEMA clubs are made equal. Uh, not all HEMA teachers are made equal, not all HEMA practitioners are made equal. Uh, it's just the same in MMA, I know, okay? So you've got to find a good club, um, and uh, what you will find is if you go to a good HEMA club, you will find that some of the people there will sometimes have very extensive uh, MMA or wrestling, you know, even if it's college wrestling or whatever backgrounds. They're not just going to be completely clueless in the grappling game, but remember, that in a scenario where weapons are involved, where both people are trained on using weapons, you have to know how to use the weapons as well. You can't just go, oh, I'm just gonna hold my back buckler out and I'm gonna run in shanking and that's my magic wand, that's how I'm gonna win the fight. Because, surprise, surprise, all of us that use swords and bucklers and other similar weapons, great swords and whatever, we're completely used to people doing that to us every single week or multiple times, you know, some people train seven days a week, we're completely used to them trying to do that to us. We're completely used to people trying to come to the grappling range and there are counters to it, which usually involve stabbing someone or chopping someone or what else, even sometimes kicking someone away. There are techniques where you push someone away with the foot at the same time as hitting them with the sword. So there's a whole bunch of techniques for dealing with those charging uh, grapplers and charging and grappling can work. It can be a good tactic, but you've got to know how to apply it in an armed context, in a weapon fight. So basically, if you want to look at weapon fighting, then look at weapon fighting. Um, and absolutely, your experience, your stamina and your strength and your grappling skills, your distance management, all of those things, they will be useful to you, but you have to add to that skill set. You have to add the knowledge of how the weapons work. 
How do you parry effectively? How do you disengage? How do you um, use the strong and weak of the blade? Um, how do you turn the sword? How do you um, hook with the pommel? How do you do all of these different things that enable you to get in close to use your grappling skills? And you need to tag that on and add that on to your grappling repertoire. I hope this has been enjoyable to watch. Check out some of my other videos if you're watching me for the first time. Uh, give me a like and a subscribe and I'll see you back on the channel soon. Cheers folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers folks.